Hello and welcome to Think Thrice, uh, where today we'll be trying to solve an integral um, that's a little bit challenging. So we'll go ahead and look at the problem we're solving today. So our problem is the integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1. So if you'd like to take a moment to try to solve this yourself, you can go ahead and pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into our solution here. So our first inclination might be that this looks similar to 1 over x squared plus 1, which would be a pretty simple trig substitution. But our big problem is this cube term. It turns out that if I try to make it look like 1 over tangent squared plus 1 by plugging in x equals tangent of theta to the 2 thirds, I'm going to end up with some pretty nasty stuff in my expression. So instead, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to reduce the degree of our denominator. So right now, it's 1 over x cubed plus 1. It would be great if I had 1 over x squared in the denominator. So the first thing we notice is that for the expression x cubed plus 3, I know that 1, 0 of that polynomial is going to be when x equals negative 1 because negative 1 cubed plus 1 is 0. So I can go ahead and say that x plus 1 is going to be able to pull out of my expression. But I need to find out what that next term is. So what is that multiplied by? What second degree polynomial is that multiplied by? So I can do some quick long division here. So if I have x plus 1 and I have x cubed plus 1, I can go ahead and treat this just as a normal long division problem. So x would be multiplied by x squared. I'd multiply that through and get x cubed plus x squared, subtract that. And I'm going to get negative x squared plus 1. Multiply this by negative x. I'm going to get negative x squared minus x. Subtract that term and get x plus 1, which luckily, as we knew it would have to, is uh, going to give us a nice even 1 here. So it turns out that we're going to be able to do x squared minus x plus 1. So we can rewrite our integral as integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1 is going to be equal to the integral of something over 1 plus x plus the integral of something over x squared minus x plus 1. So in order to find out what those are, so what we're doing here is partial fraction decomposition. So for partial fraction decomposition, I'm going to get ax squared minus ax plus a plus bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c is equal to my numerator on the left, which is just 1. And when I'm going through here, if I look at my x squared terms, I'm going to get a plus b is equal to 0. My x terms, I'm going to get negative a plus b plus c is equal to 0. And for my first degree terms, I'm going to get a plus c is equal to 1. So I can use substitution here. So if I see from this first equation that b equals negative a, from the third equation, I get c equals 1 minus a. I can plug both of those guys into my second equation to get negative a minus a plus 1 minus a is equal to 0. So 1 is equal to 3a, which means a is equal to 1 third. It follows that b is then equal to negative 1 third, and c is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so now I can re re rewrite my integral. So instead of the integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1, I now have the integral of 1 third over x plus 1 plus the integral of negative 1 third x plus 2 thirds 
over x squared minus x plus 1. All right, so looking at this expression, this first integral, pretty easy to solve. So I have x plus 1 in the denominator, a constant in the numerator. So this guy is just going to be 1 third natural log of x plus 1. Okay, but the second one is a little trickier. So right now I'll call this second integral i2, and we'll look at how we might be able to solve this. So we notice we have that one-third term in, uh, on both of the uh, items in the numerator there, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out that negative one-third. So for this i2 integral, I'm going to have negative one-third times the integral of x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. So I see that I have a second degree term in the denominator and a first degree term in the numerator. It would be really nice if I could just solve this with u substitution. So in order to do that, um, if I make the denominator equal to u, u is equal to x squared minus x plus 1, I would have du is equal to 2x minus 1 times dx. And this doesn't look exactly like my numerator over here, but I can go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So if I multiply this by 2 and multiply it by 1 half on the outside, then it'll look a little bit more familiar. So I can rewrite this now as negative 1 6 times the integral of 2x. Uh, instead of writing minus 4, I'm going to do minus 1, and then do minus 3 over here. In my denominator, I'm going to have x squared minus x plus 1, and this will be over x squared minus x plus 1 again. All right, so for this left portion, which I'm going to rename, so if I rename this guy i2 alpha, then this guy I can just use some basic u sub for. So for i2 alpha, I'm going to get negative 1 6 times natural log of x squared minus x plus 1. For the right term, it's going to be a little trickier. So let's rename that guy and work on him down below. So if I call this i2b, and let's investigate i2b below. So we notice that it's negative 1 6 times negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as 1 half. So I have 1 half times the integral of 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. Alright, so I'm looking at this, and now this, once again, this looks really similar to 1 over x squared plus 1, which we know how to integrate with u sub. Um, and I can actually, since it's a second degree term in the denominator, if I complete the square, I can put it in that form. So we just need to have 1 over something squared plus 1. If we have that something squared, we can do a substitution and move forward. So let's go ahead and complete the square here. So I have x squared minus x plus 1. It would be really nice if that was something squared plus something else. So I notice that I'm subtracting x. So if I took x minus 1 half and squared it, that would give us x squared minus x plus 1 quarter. But I'm adding 1 in the original expression, so I would need to add another 3 quarters. So we're going to go ahead and add in this whole term here. And now I can rewrite my expression as 1 half 1 over x minus 1 half squared plus 3 quarters. And since I'm a guy who likes to have things in their simplest format, I'm used to dealing with 1 over x squared plus 1. Let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by 4 thirds.
just to get it in a more standard format. Okay, and if I do that, I'll pull the four thirds out front, then that's going to give me two thirds times the integral of one over four thirds x minus one half squared plus one. All right, I like that. It's nice and simple, and we know exactly what to do here. So I have one over something squared plus one. If that something that I'm squaring was tangent of theta, then we'd be on the money road right here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So let's make tangent of theta equal to the square root of that thing on the left. So we're gonna get two over square root of three times x minus one half. And that means that if I d uh, differentiate both sides, I'm gonna get secant squared of theta d theta is equal to two over square root of three dx. So doing this substitution, I can go ahead and plug in. I'm gonna get two thirds integral of one over, uh, the way we just designed this is so that's tangent squared of theta over here. So that's tangent of theta squared plus one. Um, and I need to multiply by my d theta, or by my dx. So my dx is going to be root three over two times secant squared of theta. And remember the whole reason that we're doing the substitution here is because we know that tangent theta squared plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. So with those two terms, these guys are going to cancel, and I'm left with a very, very nice integral. So this simplifies, and I'm going to get 2 thirds times root 3 over 2 times theta plus some constant. Okay, um, And if I go back from this expression up here, I can see that theta is just arctangent of 2 over root 3 times x minus 1 half. So I can plug that into my expression and I can see that i2b is going to give me 1 over root 3 times arctangent of 2 over root 3 times x minus 1 half. All right, so I now have my whole solution. If I go ahead and add everything together, so my first portion of the integral gave me this one-third x, uh, natural log of x plus one. So if I bring that down here, I'm going to have the integral of one over x cubed plus one it's going to be that term minus one sixth natural log of x squared minus x plus one and then plus this last term here so plus one over root three arctangent of two over root three times x minus one half plus a constant and this is going to be my solution. So is it nice? It doesn't matter. It's a solution to our problem, and we have everything we need here. So I wanna thank you for coming along and solving this integral with me. Uh, if you like, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I will be joining you in the future with more problem solving. Thanks, and have a great day.